Welcome back to our line opinion panel for one last segment with violent crime burning up the headlines. Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham is looking back 50 years for her response to public safety. Now, first created in the early 1970s, the governor's Organized Crime Prevention Commission will focus on drug cartels and other groups driving the crime rate here locally. And Dan, you wrote a terrific article for the journal summing up the details of this new commission. It's a list of familiar names, uh, DAs, a former chief justice of the state Supreme Court, U.S. Marshals and others. We were talking at the table a few weeks back about New Mexico's leaders impulse to create another commission or task force every time there's a big issue here. But we have one. What's the deal? What's your sense of how the administration views this as potentially effective against crime here in the state? Well, this commission could be a little more than just a task force or, or a blue ribbon panel. Um, it does have some it's been in statute for for decades. Right. It has some subpoena power. It has some some specific authority. Um, at the news conference, the governor um, spoke a lot about the messaging. Mm -hmm. So it's is difficult to say what the the panel is actually going to do. Whether mm -hmm. it is intended to send a message to organized crime, right. um, you know, I don't know. I don't have the expertise to say whether that kind of thing is effective or not, but. Right. You know, I think it kind of remains to be seen how it develops, and it looks to me like Sam Bregman, the district attorney, mm -hmm. who was appointed to his position by the governor, mm -hmm. um, I think he is going to have a lot to do with whether this thing succeeds or not. He's heading the commission. Is, is, do well, I have that right, Mr. Bregman? I, I don't remember who specifically is the chairman, but yeah. he seems it, he seems to be the driving force behind it. Okay. Um, it's pretty clear that this is something that he wanted to do and uh, mm -hmm. that he thinks can be effective. Interesting. I'm, I'm curious, uh, Senator, did this ever come up when your time in the legislature to reboot this commission? I don't remember it. I yeah. don't remember it. You know, and, you know, maybe it's you know, things given how where crime has been, you know, more recently. I mean, we certainly had, you know, some challenges back then. Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a similar effort. Why, that, why now? I mean, it, well, I mean, look what the crime rates are. You know, I think that's driving a lot of it. But I do yeah. think there's been an, an honest recognition that federal, state, local, um, judicial, judicial and sort of law enforcement, frontline law enforcement, that there has to be a, a kind of better coordination. I mean, there's been an initiative that we, that, you know, what happened here around just getting everybody together. What, what I noticed in this last legislative session is you did have DAs and, you know, even public defenders and mm -hmm. even advocates trying to like come to some common ground on what are we going to do to tackle some of these crime problems. It's typically been around behavioral health and drug uh, and dr we have, we don't have that kind of sadly consensus around gun policy i wish we did mm -hmm. but um but i think there's this feeling that you know a lot of finger pointing you know the judges are too lenient and we're letting you are letting these guys out there was a big we didn't get any traction around the sort of pretrial pretrial detention legislation again mm -hmm. um you know wherever folks were out on that i so i do think there's a there is this um uh, lack of coordination, sometimes turfiness, but I, mm -hmm. I do think that this is another example of a sincere effort, I hope it's sincere, mm -hmm. to get better coordination in terms of which tools and which parts of our criminal justice system and law enforcement we need to sort of uh, better coordinate and better work, in, uh, sort of mm -hmm. row in the same direction to sort of, if we're going to address any of these crimes, certainly if the fentanyl, fentanyl epidemic, but also um, the gun epidemic. Mm -hmm. Joel, interestingly, speaking about tools that Eric just mentioned, this commission has subpoena power and the ability to initiate investigations. That's a little bit different than the usual commissions and such. Does that give you a little, little uh, hope for this? Or? Well, or is that a, is I think that a I'm tool? kind of the eternal optimist, yeah. and, and I admire the governor and, and for resurrecting this commission. I have great deal of respect for some of the members on the commission. Sure. I've worked with a number of them for many years, particularly uh -huh. the U.S. Marshal I have a great deal of respect for. And I, and I enjoy the fact that there is a coordinated effort, subpoena power. I mean, the local agencies and the federal agencies already had subpoena power. I don't know how much that truly adds to it. Now, let me ask you, let me stop you there. Do we have a potentially crossing of somebody needs to stay in their lane here when it comes to doing investigations? Who wins out? Is this the, this commission, the feds? Hey, I think you know. that would be a great problem that we had. There you go. Right, that we had <laughs> enough law enforcement that the agencies are fighting to bring these yeah. necessary prosecutions and coordinated effort. Mm -hmm. So if that's the result of this, that we don't know who, of whether it's the locals or the feds who take it, mm -hmm. I think that would be a great problem to have because it means at least we've met or come close to meeting our objective here. Right. If I can jump right. in Please. on what Joel said, yeah. um, mm -hmm. it, it looks to me like the commission ran into a problem 40, 50 years ago because of some of these questions you're raising. Uh, there was some tension between the attorney general right. and this commission. Right. Um, Raul Torres, the attorney general this yes. year, was present at the news conference, so maybe that won't be an issue, but 
Uh, you may have hit on something but that may me, be a challenge. But Dan, he's not on the commission. Is there a reason for that, for Roald Torres to not be there? You know, I, I, I don't know. He, yeah. was, he was present at the commission or at the news conference. Mm -hmm. it, it's clear that he seems willing to assist and to help you know, and mm -hmm. carry it out. So, mm -hmm. so we'll have to see. Hopefully, these yeah. you know coordination He's got problems stuff have been his plate, as they say too. So solved. <laughs> guys but figured yeah. out exactly right. Um, Eric, let me talk to you about continuing with Mr. Bregman here. He says the commission will a mix of public and private meetings, and if this group gets transparency phobic, as we tend to do sometimes here in New Mexico, what does that mean? Does it have to be fully transparent? Do we have to know what these guys are talking about every minute? Or, or do they need some space to do their thing if they're gonna have subpoena power and all this other kind of stuff? Well, my, uh, our experience with the sort of the, the, the Metro Crime Initiative, which is very similar at the local level, was mm -hmm. there were the official public conversations, mm -hmm. um, which were useful and uh, I think productive, and then there were a lot of behind the scenes conversations that maybe happened in a way that was, you know, could pass me legal muster in terms of transparency and so on. Right. Uh, part of the problem is is there's not enough of those. Uh, you know, I'm not in law enforcement and I'm not in the judiciary. So I, I, but what I've heard from colleagues is that sometimes we assume that prosecutors and law and frontline law enforcement and others are talking to each other a lot more than they are. Right. Um, not to mention, you know, sort of the other side. You know, the, the public defenders. Like there's there's there is this need for a safe space for people to try to solve problems. Mm -hmm. And I mean, let's be honest. A lot of these conversations are going to happen offline as they probably should yeah. you know um, because if you really there's a lot of really important uh, and sensitive stuff that needs to be uh, there needs to be a, a place for folks who are trying to solve these problems to be able right. to communicate in a productive way mm -hmm. you know I'm all about transparency but mm -hmm. you know uh, I think there's a place for that there's also a place for sort of you know how do we get to a bottom of a case or a particular issue we're, we're facing mm -hmm. you know Joel real quick uh, I want to bounce back to you and we get to Dan as well uh, how does this impact or this commission rather potentially impact the mayor's plan about using federal lawsuits about, uh, not lawsuits, but federal statutes regarding guns and violence downtown Albuquerque. Any cross there potentially you could see in your mind's eye? It's hard to see. I guess if yeah. it's focused on this organized criminal effort, then I do think you would see some overlap because a yeah. lot of the, the gun problem, particularly I think that we have here in Bernalillo County, is, mm -hmm. is more of a um, organizational effort and you know hopefully there'll be that crossover I do believe that mm -hmm. you know the feds will work um, closely with this commission as I think it should yeah but I, I'm just struck by the fact that hey they're trying to do something we're not just sitting back here and right. not making efforts to address these real serious problems I wish them wish them luck doing it but yeah. it's a, a a for effort at this point yeah, <laughs> exactly right Dan um, you talked about this a little bit the makeup of the commission itself does the makeup inform how it m might act when it comes to these kind of things? It, I mean, there's a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of gung-ho, a lot of everybody wants to contribute, certainly, but they all have backgrounds that we know about, all these individual folks. Any, any sense of uh, the, the collective group, how they might act here? Um, no, I don't know. Um, yeah, that's a hard you know, one. Sam, Sam Bregman is sort of, you know, my impression is he's a very strong personality. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I think that he is definitely going to be a big voice in this, this commission. Um, but there, you know, there's also the U.S. Marshal. There are, um, there's a, a police chief from kind of a smaller community. Um, they've got a, some different voices mm -hmm. here, um, mm -hmm. you know, big city and rural, federal and state. Right. So, um, We'll see how it comes together. We'll see who drives just, it, so to speak. I just want to add a quick point. This Please. Is two other things I think we have to think about realistically, right? Mm -hmm. One is um, many of these positions are elected positions. Mm -hmm. So um, ah. you know, I think some of these folks have, may have some other things they're thinking about. Uh, not, to, not to suggest that. I'm hearing you. Yeah. Uh, what Sam's up to. But sure. um, the other thing is there are serious resource uh, questions here. And this isn't a lot of lack of will to try to cooperate, but we, we learned in trying to do the, some of the funding piece of this in this last session that mm -hmm. despite our genuine effort to coordinate and, and collaborate, you know, at the end of the day, there's a lot of resources that are really kind of, you know, there's a big battle for resources. Right. If you want to do, you know, we wanted to chase more warrants and we had to really work with the rest of law enforcement to figure out you know how are we going to how are we going to carve up this you know this this overtime right. pay to, to chase That's the right. warrants and it you know it's been a it's been, a it's been challenging Absolutely. you know because yeah. people need re everybody could use more resources right? right the courts the the DAs the public defenders certainly frontline law enforcement mm -hmm. so uh, it's not always as I mean there's the the picture of coordinating working together standing together and then there's like who's going to get 
who's going to get the That's money right. to do their job. I wonder right? if, they, I wonder if these, is this commission is going to be somewhat of a de facto advocacy group. <laughs> if they're the ones to be able to go to the legislature and say, hey, in order for us to do this effectively, you're going to have to fatten everybody up here. That would, Eric's be great. Exactly that would be right. great. I want to say thanks again to this line panel. Terrific stuff this week. Let us know what you think about any of the topics these folks covered on our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram pages, and catch any episode you may have missed on the PBS app, your Roku, or Smart TV. Thanks again for joining us and for staying informed and engaged. We'll see you again next week in Focus.